Imagine you made a minor hiccup at work and it cost your team an important project. We've all could be there, right? But what if there was a way to turn these minor bumps in the road into valuable learning opportunities? Well, today, we're diving into a powerful technique called Gibbs Reflective Cycle. Gibbs Deflective Cycle approach is used as a tool for understanding the learning from experience process. It helps to describe and analyze the way of perceiving behavior and thoughts in certain situations and to make the most of it. Let's dive into the history of Gibbs Reflective Cycle. So buckle up, we're heading back in time. Gibbs Cycle is named for its creator, scientist Josiah Willard Gibbs. In 1988, he wrote a book called Learning by Doing, which helped to revolutionize teaching methods in education. Gibbs emphasized the importance of critical reflection and created the reflective cycle as a tool for improving learning through experience. Today, it's still considered one of the best ways for people to understand how they learn from experience. Gibbs reflective model is structured into the process of learning through six stages, description, feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusions, and plan of action. Each of the six stages of Gibbs model encourages the individual to reflect on their experiences through questions. Let's break down each stage of Gibbs reflective cycle and explore its impact on experiences. The first stage is description. Here, the idea is for you to describe and understand what happened. It's crucial to capture all the details and context surrounding the situation. You may ask yourself, what happened? And what did you do? Or how did you react? Were other people involved in this situation? If so, what did they do? What was the outcome? Note that during this stage, you should only state what happened and not give your opinion or jump to conclusions. Try to describe the situation as it unfolded as accurately as possible. Next comes the feeling stage. In this phase, you should delve into our emotional response to the experience. The self-reflection process will help you understand how you felt before, during, and after a situation and how your feelings might have impacted your experience. Relevant self-reflection questions will help you with it. Ask yourself, what did you feel before, during, and after the situation? Were other people involved in it? If so, what do you think others felt? What do you think about it now? This step matters a lot because how you feel in a situation will show if you need to get better and make changes to feel good when a similar thing happens again. Now let's move on to the evaluation stage. Here, we critically assess our actions, behaviors, and decisions during the experience. The idea is to objectively look at the situation and try to understand what worked and what did not. As a result, ensure you focus on both the positive and negative aspects of a situation to make the most of your personal reflection process. Here are questions to answer. What was good about the experience? What was negative about it? How do you and other people contribute to the situation? Now, it's time for analysis. This is one of the most critical steps of the model. This stage focuses on exploring the underlying factors and influences contributing to the situation. You need to examine your thoughts, beliefs, and external factors to gain insights into the dynamics. Separate what went well and what did not and question why. Why did things go well? Or why didn't they? What sense can I make of this experience? What additional knowledge can I use to help me better understand what happened? Next one is the conclusion stage. Now, draw your insights from the previous stages. Sum up what you've learned so far and highlight what specific changes to your actions could help improve the future outcome. And questions to ask yourself are, what did you learn from this situation? How could it has been more positive for everybody? What skills do you need to acquire to better deal with a similar situation? Lastly, we arrive at the action plan stage. This is your time to plan what you should do differently the next time a similar or related situation arises. This step empowers you to transform your reflections into tangible actions. Besides, not only should you plan what you would do differently, but you should also know how to make it happen. Some of the relevant questions you should ask yourself include, if you had to go through the same situation again, what would you do differently? 
How will you develop and implement your skills to handle things better? How can you review your progress? Following these six stages of Gibbs' reflective cycle, you will unlock the power of self-reflection and personal growth. It's a transformative process that empowers you to continuously learn from your experiences and become the best version of yourself. Wondering how those six stages work? Let's take a look at the example. Our character, Jane, has recently experienced a breakup with her long-term partner. Jane feels a mix of sadness, relief, and confusion. She misses the comfort of her relationship but recognizes the issues that led to the breakup. The breakup was tough for Jane, but she also felt a sense of liberation. It was hard to lose her partner, but she started realizing the issues they had. Jane understands that both she and her ex-partner contributed to the issues in their relationship. She sees that they were not entirely compatible and that the breakup, though painful, might have been necessary. Jane concludes that she needs to understand herself better and what she wants from a relationship before entering a new one. She realizes that the breakup was an opportunity for self-growth. Jane plans to take time for herself and use this period for self-reflection. She aims to learn from this experience and to apply these lessons in future relationships. So, the next time you find yourself in a challenging situation or a moment of triumph, remember Gibbs' reflective cycle. To simplify things, we've created a template for the Gibbs' reflective cycle so you can start using it immediately. All the steps are conveniently organized in one place and you can easily edit the text fields. Additionally, you can print out the template for creating handouts. You'll find the link in the description. To learn more about the Gibbs cycle and how it helps, read our article 6 stages of Gibbs reflective cycle. The link is in the description. Can you recall an experience where the Gibbs reflective cycle would have been helpful? Share your stories in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more inspiring content. Until next time, keep reflecting and keep growing.